Have you ever wondered what is it that the good Fortnite players are doing that you are not? What is it about them that makes them so much better than you? Why do you keep failing so epically while they're winning almost every other game they play? Well, today we're going to be solving that mystery for you guys on this video. What is up, guys? Jimmy or Chaos, welcome to Chaos Top 10s, and today we're going to be counting down. 10 things that only the good Fortnite players do. So if you're ready to improve your game a bit, watch this video. Let's get started. This month's giveaway is for a new PlayStation 4 console. All you have to do to enter is drop a like on this video, be subscribed to the channel, and turn on your notifications so you never miss an upload. And in the comment section, let me know why you want to win the PS4 and include your Twitter handle so I can contact you if you're the winner. The winner will be announced at the end of the month. Kicking off the list, and some of these are going to be no-brainers to a lot of you, but hopefully you get a little nugget of information somewhere in this video. Always take higher rarity, and this is something that should be a no-brainer, but there are still plenty of people who don't do it. Fortnite Battle Royale runs on a rarity system where there are multiple versions of the same guns, each with a rare version that does slightly more damage and has slightly faster reload times. However, a lot of people don't really appreciate the differences between the lower rarities. Sure, you may swap out your gray assault rifle for a blue one, but you don't swap a gray for a green. Well, you need to start doing that. The differences between the lower rarities are very small and barely even noticeable, but whether or not you notice the differences does not change the fact that they are there. They are real. A green gun will always be a little more helpful than a gray one, and you should always swap it out for that one because you never know when that extra one point of damage or that extra split second of reload time is going to be helpful to help you win a gunfight. Remember, Fortnite Battle Royale is one and done, so you don't have a second chance. At number nine, remapping your building buttons. This one applies more to PC players as they have a lot more options with their button choices than console players do. When you first boot up Fortnite on the PC, the default layout is going to be the F buttons for your building materials, F1, F2, F3, etc. Or you can just scroll through them with your mouse wheel. I'm telling you right now that you should 100% change this layout and have specific buttons for different building pieces. Can you get really good with the default layout? Sure. Can you really get really good at just scrolling through the different pieces really quickly? Probably. But as far as speed and precision goes, it is in your best interest to remap the different building pieces to specific buttons so you can always swap to them without having to worry about scrolling too far with your mouse wheel or having to move your hands up on the F keys. All your good PC Fortnite players do this. At number seven, let's talk a little bit about equipment. You need to have a good mouse. In addition to remapping the building buttons on PC, also very, very important thing is to have a good mouse to go along with it. Now, much like the remapping thing, it is totally possible to be a beast at Fortnite with a dumpy bargain bin mouse. But if we're being dead honest here, which I like to think we are, having a great mouse will always be a better idea. Having a very precise mouse will allow you to make very slight movements in shooters, and it's also a good idea to have a pretty resistant click wheel so you don't have to worry about over-scrolling when you're under pressure and end up eating damage because of it. A good mouse is always a good investment if you are trying to get really good at Fortnite or any other shooter, for that matter, on your PC. At number seven, remap building buttons to the mouse. That's right. Let's go ahead and slap the last two entries together. The real good gaming mice will usually have some extra buttons on the left side so your thumb can get into the action. What almost all your competitive Fortnite players and high-level streamers do is remap the different building buttons and their weapon keys if there's space to the side of their mouse so they don't even have to worry about using the mouse wheel or moving their left hand at all when they need to switch weapons, drop materials, anything, quickly build a firefight. If you have a mouse with buttons on the side of it, you should go into your settings and figure out a good configuration that will allow you to swap between different building pieces and or weapons without having to move your left hand from the movement keys at all. The less you have to reposition your hand, the better. At number six, pump over tack. Okay, I know there is a ton of personal preference between the two shotguns, and I know even Drifter said in his in-depth video that there isn't a huge difference between the two terms of functionality, but it is no secret that almost all of the competitive players and streamers prefer the pump 
over the tactical unless it's a purple, which we don't have anymore. <laughs> While it's much easier to spam the tactical shotgun to get some easy damage, the pump is far more reliable when it comes to cleaning somebody up quickly. Now, many pros will run both the pump and the tack so they can get that first shot off with the pump and then finish the person off with some tack spam. But when it comes to a singular choice, the pump is definitely where it's at for your better Fortnite players. Cracking into the top five, learning to snipe. Now that's easier said than done, obviously. I've been trying to learn to snipe in video games for years. There is a huge factor to whether or not you can be a high level Fortnite player. The sniping in Fortnite is very fun and super satisfying, but it's also pretty damn difficult to get the hang of because of the various factors at play, like bullet drop, travel time, and leading your shots. If you watch any high level Fortnite player, they are all super good at sniping because they have a really good grasp on how the mechanics work and they are comfortable taking shots from 200 meters away and even more. The only downside to this is the fact that it's pretty difficult to get the hang of sniping in Fortnite because there is no practice mode. Come on Epic Games and you have to learn through failure. But if you really want to get good at sniping, be sure to always grab the snipers when you see them and challenge yourself in the match. Push your limits. There's no way to get better at sniping unless you fail a lot. And if you aren't good at it, chances are you won't be able to reach the level of skill that other players are having because it's an added bonus to their already huge arsenal. At number four, learn to listen. This one is huge for Battle Royale games because Fortnite is a one and done kind of game. You really need to be aware of your surroundings and that does not just mean visually. In order to play very well at Fortnite and get very consistent with your placings and victories, you need to learn how to identify the sounds of the game and where exactly they are coming from. That means identifying footsteps, learning to identify where they're coming from, whether someone is above or below you, listening for what kind of gun your enemy is using, listening if they have traps, everything guys, changes to the environment with construction or destruction. The list goes on and on. The audio is so important in Fortnite. So much of the game is based off of it. So learn how to identify the different sounds of the game and react accordingly to them. It's going to give you that split second that you didn't have before. At number three, building under pressure. This one goes back to what I said about how important it is to remap your building buttons. When two high level players get into a fight, it almost always results in a crazy building battle with insane structures and dynamic movement, and honestly, very little actual gunfire. If you're gonna challenge someone in a building battle, you need to be very quick with your construction and your decisions, but you also need to be able to think fast and know what pieces to build and where. You can't just throw down a bunch of ramps and walls and call it a day. You need to see what your opponent is doing, what they're building, and what you can add to their structure to help along with it while it also keeps things in your favor. You always want the high ground in Fortnite, but you also want a decent amount of cover and a quick escape route in case you need to heal up or just try to book it out of there. Learn what structures and layouts are good for you in a build fight, and it's much like sniping. Be prepared to learn through a lot of failure. At number two, jump while moving. This is a given, but we're gonna say it anyway. When you're running through an open area, you need to be jumping and moving unpredictably or else someone else is going to blow your head off with a sniper and you can't win like that. My buddy Hollow likes to say, run like you're being chased by an alligator. If you need to run through a field, always assume that there is a sniper looking at you and just <laughs> think about what movements would frustrate you if the roles were reversed. Think of all the times that you tried to snipe someone and they were dodging all your shots and then just do that. Do your best to never stand still or be moving in a way that is predictable for somebody to punish you. There's going to be times where they get lucky, but for the most part, this is going to keep you alive a lot more consistently. And finally, this is the most important thing. Hopefully you stuck around to the end of the video for this piece of knowledge. Have fun. It's a game. It's easy to take a game like Fortnite so seriously, but you have to remember, it is a game and we're here to have fun. If you're not having fun or you feel yourself taking things too seriously, back off for a little while. Try to remember why you play the games in the first place before getting back on, or maybe go play a different game for a bit. Sure, it's fun to take things very seriously for a while, but if that's all you're doing, it's probably not the best idea. You need to remember to have fun while playing because that is ultimately what the games are for. And I see so many people, including myself, that get so caught up when you want to get better, you want to get those victories, you want to do well, and then you end up getting so frustrated that you're looking at it like, why am I doing this to myself? Have fun with the game. And there you have it, my friends. Those are 10 things that only good Fortnite players do. If you guys are like me, or you are trying to get better at this game every day. And if you follow some of these things, I guarantee you it's going to improve 
your game. Let me know. What do you think is the most important thing to do to get better at Fortnite in the comment section? There's a playlist below with all the other Fortnite videos. Make sure you guys go check them out. We've got some really, really good ones on that list. And if you enjoyed the video, you found it informative, drop a like. Make sure you're subscribed and turn on that notification bell so you never miss a future video. Thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys soon.